Three projections in 30 days going into the 2024 regular season for the New York Mets as we continue our month-long deep dive into the Mets 40-man roster. Today, we are talking about DJ Stewart. Now, after the Mets trade deadline sale, Stewart was called up from AAA Syracuse as a roster fill-in for the rest of the season. Well, in that two-month stretch, Stewart was a lot more than that, slashing 244, 333, 506 with 11 home runs and a 130 weighted runs created plus in 185 plate appearances. That stretch earned him a $1.4 million re-signing earlier this offseason. As a former first-round pick by Baltimore back in 2015, the offensive upside was always there for Stewart, but unlocking it to the next level of production has never happened before. Taking his sample with a grain of salt, Stewart's batted ball data was very promising, landing in the top 10% in barrel rate and the top 20% in hard hit rate, basically providing the value that a man who shall not be named was supposed to provide while also adding positional value. Defensively, Stewart is not great, but serviceable in left field with a solid arm. As of right now, entering a 30-year-old season, Stewart is expected to be one of the Mets' internal DH options for 2024 as the Mets hold team control through 2027. He has an amazing August, and we're like, oh my gosh, Mets found their DH, you know, goodbye, man who should not be named. And in September, he goes right back to being just awful. Full-time, he'll do more than what the Mets DH has got last year, but that isn't saying much. But I like him more in the role of, like, pinch hitter, occasional starts. Uh, you know, if there's a matchup to use him, then you can. But I'm not expecting much. I, I got to be honest. I, I think we're getting much more of the guy that was in Baltimore. Uh, compared to the guy we saw in August, which, again, the, he was so great in August, those numbers are not even close to realistic. But I don't even think we see anywhere close to that guy that we saw for that month stretch. He was a fun story in meaningless baseball in August, and it was nice to see, again, a former first-round pick. You know, nice nice story. Gave a good hot streak, which is fine. But over a 162, he's not that. So, again, he's depth. He's He can be versatile. He can play. You need him in the corner. He can be the DH. Again, he's protection if Mark Vientos keeps swinging like Helen Keller at the plate. You know, he can give you better ABs if need be at that DH position. But again, there's nothing more. You know, do I think he's a long-term building block? Of course not. But he's a fun guy. He's a nice depth piece to have. And again, he hits for power, which for most people on this team, they don't do. DJ Stewart, I think we did see a lot of ad adjustments uh, as to compared to what he was doing, where he was rolling over a lot to the the left side which was something that was one of the main concerns when he was in Baltimore and I think that you know he kind of was able to go through the ball and not on top of the ball and that's something that I think that really helped him kind of pull it because he has a really good pull side and you know a decent amount of bat speed that can give him a lot of power now 11 home runs of course and a crazy stretch in August obviously you're going to have to see more but I think that you will get plus production from him if he were to be on the major league roster you're obviously not going to get the 130 bat that you just saw last year but obviously it's a small sample size but I think that overall if you're looking at batted ball data from what he did in AAA Syracuse and what he did in the MLB it matched up pretty well and I think that you know if you have him in pinches in sorts I think that he can play a decent role on this team at his best and that's how kind of I'm looking at it. And we'll see how that kind of unravels throughout spring, of course, with Mark Vientos having a huge spotlight on him. And G-Man Choi, Luke Voigt, also getting some playing time too. So we'll see what happens with that DH spot. But I think that DJ Stewart definitely has a place on this team. But obviously, it is not going to be a monstrous August as we saw last year. So as for these projections, I just want to remind everybody the projections are not predictions. They are benchmarks of the player's current specific percentile outcome based on predictive data and results. For my projections, I decided to go with their 75th percentile outcome in my opinion, but although a majority of player projections are from the 50th percentile outcome, I personally wanted to have kind of a median between sustainability and upside it also gives you a decent look as to who i am high on and who i am low on 
going into the 2024 season. As for DJ Stewart, I have 303 plate appearances, slashing 222, 307, 404 with 13 home runs, 42 runs batted in, a 98 weighted runs created plus, and a 0.2 wins above replacement. Potentially, he's in a part-time role with Mark Bantos. 303 ABs, again, 98 WRC+. plus. About a league average bat, that's kind of what he is. That batting average is about 222. Kind of what he is, so I mean, it's a fair projection. Solid bat off your bench on a capable team. I probably can revise these a little bit, not to mention, but... Of course, this projection was made before they signed Luke Voigt, before they signed G-Man Choi, so we don't know how they fit into the equation, but you know that's how kind of I'm looking at it, um, and it, it just hasn't changed. So. Yeah, I think the plate appearances might be a little high because last year he was getting reps literally as a starting DH, and if not starting DH, it was in the outfield quite a bit with the Stalling Marte injury. So it's like if there's a little more health this year, he shouldn't be getting that many plate appearances, but if he does and he has – not one crazy stretch, but one slightly hot stretch. You might be able to see a little bit more home runs with that amount of plate appearances. Overall, it seems pretty on the mark. Slightly below average, some power. So, you know, it's nothing too far away from what I would have thought. Kind of it more puts like Luke Voigt and G-Man Choi out of the equation, but also you have to think about it of the injury concern you have in the outfield with all three guys that are going to be starting. Of course, you could see DJ Stewart in the corner at one point. Of course, you do have more flexibility with Tyrone Taylor. Uh, you know, maybe you hope some prospects pan out from the from AAA, but there is a possibility where you have some injury concerns from Bader or Marte, maybe even Nimmo and. Stewart could get a decent amount of innings in the outfield. Is There is a strong possibility that could happen, and that's what I've also put into account in this projection with plate appearances, where I think he is going to get a decent amount of opportunities given what he's shown last year. It is going to be pretty interesting to see how this does get dealt out with the amount of leash that they do give to Mark Vientos and maybe the amount of leash they give to DJ Stewart. I think that DJ Stewart has a role here at his very, very best he definitely could contribute to the team's offense in a plus way.